Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of F123 Driver Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. We are coming off of our first win of the season after a 8th, 9th and 9th place result in Australia, Mexico as well as Circuit of the Americas. We went to the French Grand Prix and were able to get back to the top step of the podium. It was really, I would say the first race of the year, you know, that went right from start to finish and it showed with the finishing effort there. So uh, yeah, I mean, couldn't ask for much more uh, after the big team meeting going into that episode now so we were rolling in with some momentum into a track that we've won at twice previously in our Formula 1 career of course uh, last episode uh, was our 11th career win in the sport so two of them have been in Monaco I would prefer we go three and uh, three wins in Monaco 12 career wins by the end of this episode if everything works out here uh, but of course that means uh, a good qualifying effort now qualifying is everything in Monaco as we were pretty happy with the car in uh, FP1 here P11 on the board here as you can see the rest of the order but of course really you know the main focus is on qualifying and, and what we can do and, and put on the board there because it's just about uh, holding on to track position in the race there. So we have had a very successful uh, series of qualifying efforts here in the past in Monaco, which have obviously made our races uh, a lot easier. So uh, it's all about getting aggressive. This is the one qualifying where you really got to put it on the line and, uh, you know, walk between those fine walls, of course, that are on both sides of your car here in Monaco. Q1, uh, as you could expect, it was a breeze through this uh, through this first session. So we cross the stripe, we go P9, uh, of the top 10 there so pretty happy with that and we're gonna see the ones eliminated in this first qualifying session Armstrong Joe Butler Hughes and Callie Mayer at the bottom of the grid here after some competitive efforts from her in recent episodes here uh, Q2 uh, similar vibes here really wasn't pushing that hard which was making me very confident to say the least here so we're gonna round the final turn uh, DRS open down this front straight away as we head to the line and it's gonna be P9 again and I was pretty happy because like I said I wasn't really pushing that hard and we were only about seven tenths of a second off while Ocon, uh, Gasly, Lawson, Sainz and Sonoda all out in Q2 so I was feeling pretty confident actually going into Q3 thinking you know what we might have a chance here uh, to go for at least a top three starting position uh, pole might be a little bit of a stretch but I was pretty happy with my first lap I did go early in the session giving myself a chance for two laps in case I make a mistake on this first and opening one here but I'm pretty happy with how this lap is going and it's showing on the times we're on pace to go potentially p1 here with the first lap as we go down through the final turn i crashed i i, I crashed i'm out and just like that uh, i went from looking like a, a potential p1 to out in qualifying we will be starting p10 that means so not good because you know at a normal race it wouldn't be the end of the world uh, but in Monaco, it's so hard to pass, and it would be Russell on pole uh, with his teammate in fourth there, the two McLaren sandwiched in between Valbon and Jackson Drogovic there in P5 for the set of the grid. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word, that's how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 meters up the hill, past the casino, and then descend towards the harbor through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of 19 corners. And don't expect to see much overtaking here today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position. Just edging out Alex Albon, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Jackson, Norris, Drogovic, Oscar Piastri, Hamilton, Verstappen, Leclerc, Golden Boy, Ocon, Gasly, Liam Lawson, Sainz, Sonoda, Armstrong, Joe, Butler, Hughes, and Callie Mayer. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. And with me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? 
That was a great win in the last race, but can they keep that momentum going into this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. We're ready to roll here from Monaco now. It's going to be the usual medium to hard compound tire strategy. There's going to be some on softs for sure. Uh, I think mediums are the way to go to just stretch out the run uh, and not get caught up in traffic. Here we go then. The formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. You see the strategies there, Norris through Hamilton all on softs, joining them the Alpines of Ocon and Gasly, the uh, Connor Sports of Butler and Mare and JQs in the Williams. As the cars come back towards the grid to line up for the start of the race, each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can. And they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, and failing that within the points. All right, team, sorry about yesterday. Uh, I'll make it up today. We can always count on you, mate. Get it done today. Ready to roll then here from Monaco uh, as George Russell and the Mercedes comeback is really in full swing right now. They're getting closer and closer to getting back to the top step of the podium. It's been forever uh, since Hamilton won his, what, uh, ninth world championship with the team. I think since they have last gone to the top step here. So, yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. Williams, by the way, a new livery on the car here as a self-sponsored team after Martini uh, left them with their contract issues now. But we are ready to go racing here in Monaco. It's going to be lights out. We're racing for 39 laps. Hamilton, a rough start on the sauce. We'll immediately get out in front of him and Leclerc as we dive up the inside of Verstappen just about, but we back out of it there. That would not have worked well, but we get through from P10 up into P8 tier as it's going to be Russell as well as a McLaren duo of Albon Jackson. Then you got Norris followed by my teammate of Felipe Drogovic. Now you look at this season, of course, you know, a few races is all we've got in, but Drogovic has beat us the majority so far uh, whatever way you want to look at it maybe it wasn't on pace and it was more on uh, luck on his side he has still uh, had the upper edge on us in terms of the finishing positions as everyone comes through uh, that very slow hairpin now as everyone heads down now through the tunnel uh, where we can kind of settle in focus in on the task at hand this is kind of what you got to th get through is that first half a lap in Monaco and then you can settle in and, and try to actually uh, make your way forward which is, is such a difficult task to do in Monaco. I mean, it's a total different Grand Prix uh, from any other Grand Prix on the calendar. Uh, rumor has it this could be the last Grand Prix that we see Monaco uh, for a little bit here on the calendar now, just really because it doesn't produce you know, much action. Let's be real here uh, as we continue, though, to the end of lap three. Now, DRS uh, has been enabled, of course, by this point now. And uh, Hamilton's uh, stuck behind us currently, but a second behind on Sauce Leclerc in the Trancos machine in P10. Trancos has kind of cooled off. They started the season hot. You know, it's like I said, we're only a few races in, but uh, things have kind of changed where Mercedes was almost looking similar to where they were last season to the last few episodes. They've really picked it up and, and now Russell is in position to get them uh, back on the top step here today and Norris having a good run as well. Norris has had good pace this season. He just hasn't quite been able to uh, finish out the races like Russell has because of a few mechanical issues as well. Uh, two of those uh, races have already resulted in mechanical failures uh, for Lando Norris here as we continue on uh, to lap nine at this point and still just stunk right here uh, behind Max Verstappen. He can't really do anything at this point. We're just waiting for things to open up. You're waiting for an opportunity to open here. Uh, as we look at lap 10, Russell leading the way over Alex Salbon. One second just under between the two of them. And then you can see Jackson about a second behind. Uh, Norris a little ways further back he's, as he's being chased by uh, the others behind him. Now, but look at this. Now, as we start lap 10, we're all over the back of Max Verstappen here. He was actually starting to slip and slide a little bit. He was kind of struggling on the exit of some of these corners. You can see see it right there. A bit of a slide. Again, another slide from Verstappen. And, and watch this as we come through uh, what I call the bus stop chicane. You're going to see right here we're just able to suddenly get a little bit better off the corner. And as we chase him down towards turn 1 on lap 11, he's going to go through the corner, nearly spin it into the barrier. He saves it, but that opens the door wide open. I knocked, he opened, I said hello, and I'm coming in. Wheel to wheel up through the elevation, side by side through the left-hander. He slides again. He parks the bus on our nose, and we've damaged the front wing. What a stupid Are you kidding me, dude? Box this lap, we have damage. You saw the replay right there. I mean, Verstappen, an awkward line, obviously, but then he just kind of slid, corrected, and parked it right on our nose. 
So we have to make an immediate pit stop here to come in and fix the damage, which has completely unraveled our race. It's kind of been the story of our season. Things have uh, just gone wrong a lot this season so far. Fortunately, you know, it's early in the season, so there's time to make up for, uh, you know, these challenges uh but it's certainly not uh fun uh to be dealing with this now we would uh head back out on track we're going to be dead last year behind the pair of williams of jq's as well as zhou guan yu williams and uh, after their partnership with martini has ended are not looking very hot and uh they are looking uh for a new partner if they can't find a sponsor going into next season here now as you can see getting after it right here with jq's i don't like being you know making moves in those really a tight and aggressive spots, but uh, we kind of have to right now. We got to get going here. Up the inside now of Joe. This is lap 13. Trying to make the best lap time I possibly can, of course, uh, because we're going to be losing time. We're going to be gaining time, but then losing it when we catch a car, of course, uh, to the cars that we're racing of the Verstappen, uh, as well as Oscar Piastri we're trying to focus on as well. We're going to go around the outside of Mayor, but we need to build up the biggest gap we can because keep in mind as well uh we are going to uh be on significantly older tires than everybody else that's going to be pitting so we're going to be slower for the last you know half of this grand prix it's just trying to find that track position basically so uh this is not going to be easy and the only thing that can really help us is maybe a red flag that would be the only thing and that's after the pit stop cycle and i, I don't see that happening here going uh for a little switchback right here on loss and i did it on butler do it on loss and here a few moments later here lap 16 now at this point we're all over the back of his teammate of Marcus Armstrong now the rookie uh, in the sport actually for once having a decent effort here in P13 having a solid run uh, is Marcus Armstrong we'll go up the inside though uh, into the bus stop chicane here's wheel to wheel and we give him the space he needs but we get the job done up at a P13 here and now pit stops are starting to get underway for some of the uh, top 10 drivers Hamilton exiting the pits right now and his Ferrari we were ahead of him when we pitted we're behind him now but we're going to exit turn one with a huge head of steam. We swing to the right side. It's going to be a drag race again with another Ferrari up the elevation. We close the door this time on Hamilton. We take P11 for now. Thank goodness that one is done. But it's about maximizing the uh, pace in this car right now. And we fortunately only have about one more car to deal with. Uh, as my teammate Dragovic and Piastri have now pitted. They're still way out in front. You cannot get much closer between a car and a wall than we just did with the BMW of Carlos Sainz right there around the outside through turn one but unfortunately we're four and a half seconds uh behind piastri we won't be able to run them down because we're on older tires and they're on mediums here now as well uh as you can see right here now leclerc verstappen exiting and here we are we're going to be well out in front of verstappen hamilton won't because he actually got stuck for a little bit longer than i did behind carlos sign so we were able to put a nice gap between them but now verstappen he's on the same compound of tire but he is going to be quicker because he has a quite a bit fresher tire than I do. Yellow flags in the background, and that's Devin Butler in the corner sport who's out of the race. And you see the radio message on the screen. It sounds like something might actually be wrong with Devin Butler here as well as he pulls over with a mechanical failure. We'll have to wait and see what's going on there, but his day is over, and we will probably have an upgrade, or upgrade, we'll have an update coming in through the grid here in a few moments' time now, but uh, and now it's at this point just trying to hold on to P7. That's the best we're going to be able to do uh, at this point in time, and, and Verstappen was knocking on the door, and obviously I'm not going to make it easy on Verstappen. He was the one that put us in an awkward situation there uh, with the wing damage, so it's certainly not going to be a, an easy task for Verstappen uh, to be able to pass me here uh, before this Grand Prix is over now. But he wasn't putting a whole lot of pressure on me right off the bat, but about lap 23, 24, you can see now he would really close up right here. And that was where my life was getting difficult now. But we're going to go through the grid in Monaco. Will we finally see Mercedes back on top this afternoon? Russell is in position to hold off Albon in these final 15 laps. He is looking good, Crofty. On top of that, the team as a whole is looking good with both cars uh, on the podium as we speak. And we're monitoring a quickly uh, developing um, um, story with Devon Butler. Natalie is with Connor Sport team principal, Casper Ackerman right now. Casper, what can you tell us about the status of Devon? It was his hearing. He'd been keeping it from us. I think maybe he'd been trying to keep it from himself. What can you say? Um, so basically he's had a hearing issue and it sounds like um, when the engine went on him there, it pushed it past a point of what he is able to handle. Uh, I hate to say it, uh, everyone, but this might have been the last race of Devon Butler's career. 
A fine young man. We wish him the best from here. And there you have a brief through the grid and as well uh, developments behind the scenes with Connor Sport here. You heard Casper Ackerman, team principal of Connor Sport, address it uh, in the interview with Natalie Pinkham uh, in Through the Grid, and you saw that little bit right there. And, and we just witnessed, uh, from the looks of it, potentially the end of Devin Butler's career as he's been hiding a hearing issue. Uh, and it sounds like the mechanical issue when the engine actually went, uh, the sound that it made actually uh, basically put his issue uh, beyond what he was able to handle at this point now. So I think we've just witnessed the end of Devin Butler's career in Formula One here now as we continue to be chased by Max Verstappen here in these tight streets of Monaco now as we go through the chicane. A little bit of oversteer here coming to the final 10 laps of this Grand Prix. We've been hit from behind into the barrier and our day is over in Monaco. Verstappen has run us over as he's driven right into our rear wing and you look at it right there. He drove right through into the back of myself and took off in the distance. That's what he gets for backing me up like a Did that look on purpose to you? Yep, we have data that shows him throttle up into you after braking. We're reporting immediately. Well, this situation is long from over, and you're going to find out the outcome to start the next episode. Uh, I don't know how it happened, but Mercedes and George Russell managed to lose somehow. Uh, to Alex Albon, who was able to pass Russell. Russell would end up in second. Uh, Jackson would end up in third, but... That's been our season, man. It, it's been so confusing. Um, I, I can't believe it. And I didn't break uh, from what I felt like anything differently. I was having to bank up the corner a little bit into those, uh, you know, penultimate corner over the recent laps there. But I didn't feel like I did anything different there. I could be wrong, honestly. Uh, but for Verstappen, either way, drove right into the back of me. I tried to get it stopped. Uh, and then uh, once I wasn't able to actually get it backed up enough to make the corner i just locked it down and, and straight lined it so uh and obviously that's what put me out of the race but it, it sounds like uh the team has data to prove that verstappen uh not only you know ran into me obviously we know that but it sounds like there might have been some intention out of frustration so this is a story that's really going to be picking up going into the next episode uh for the chinese grand prix there uh but on top of that as well Devin Butler, what's going on with him? It sounds like he's out for the rest of the season with injury, uh, with a, a hearing situation. We're out of the race, of course. That's our first actual DNF of the season. Uh, a lot of frustration there. Obviously, this doesn't help us in the situation for the championship that we're desperately trying to stay a part of when we know we have the car that's capable of doing it. Uh, we have to, you know, 59 points behind. We have to have a perfect season from this point on uh it's simple as that and and we're gonna come back and, and we're gonna we're gonna dominate we're gonna be a, a serious force to be reckoned with now we're not gonna get wrecked out of a race like that in, in that fashion and, and not come back and, and show the sport you know what we're going to do so we're gonna go into china and we're gonna show these guys up that's the goal there uh and we'll see what happens with verstappen as well uh i'll see you guys then thank you for watching have a great day